Hi, I'm Becky Coletta. I'm a candidate for state senate in the special senate primary on March 3rd. I hope I earn your vote. Thank you. PTN This Week with Kyle Harney and Art Edgerton is brought to you by Becky Coletta, Democrat for State Senate. We have lots of news this week, including a trip to Camp Squanto to meet with the latest wood badge recipient and to check in with some of the scouts. Take some of our leadership skills and impart that in the, in the boys as they grow up. New cell phone laws are now in effect, and it's on to three candidates vying for the job of Pembroke Town Manager. I'm Art Edgerton, and here's the news. In Pembroke and across the state, it is now illegal to use your cell phone or any other electronic device while driving, except when using hands-free mode. Lieutenant Wendy LaPierre of the Pembroke Police Department has all the details. Drivers can only use electronic devices and mobile phones in the hands-free mode and are only permitted to touch the devices to activate a hands-free call. So it might be like a um, swipe of the phone to answer it, but that's right. all that you're allowed to do. First offense will um, get them a $100 fine. Second offense will be $250, plus a mandatory completion of a distracted driving program. And the third and subsequent offenses will be $500 fine, plus an insurance surcharge, along with the distracted driving educational okay. program. Drivers who are under 18 are still not allowed to use any electronic devices. They can't use them at all. They cannot. All phone okay. use between the ages of 16 and 18 is illegal, even in the hands-free mode. Pembroke Boy Scout Troop 105 has an assistant scoutmaster who just earned his wood badge. Jim Agnew received the award at a recent court of honor at the North Pembroke Elementary School. Wood badge is a prestigious award given to adult leaders after training where the adults learn how to be like a Boy Scout. I caught up with Jim at Camp Squanto in Plymouth Miles Stanis State Forest. The Wood Badge is a program that's almost 100 years old now. It was started by the founder of scouting, Lord Baden-Powell. And it's a way for adult leaders to come together in small groups and talk about leadership skills, not dissimilar to what happens in corporate America. Uh, how do you build teams? Uh, how do you think about problem solving? Uh, what are ways that you can help grow your troop and help the kids become more engaged and have more fun in scouting? And uh, it was about a year long process and it was, it was great. It was really a lot of fun. And, uh, and I hope more of our adult leaders will take, uh, take advantage of the Wood Badge program. We've got probably, I think, three or four of us now that have gone through the program. Oh. And it's been, uh, it's been very rewarding. And I think it's a way to really give back a little bit to the troop and give back to the boys by going through that training program. It's, it's a bit of a rare, uh, uh, a rare program, so not everybody goes through it because there is a time commitment and there's some homework to do. Nice. But I think at the end of the day, it's uh, it's rewarding and it's a way to you know really help the kids uh, you know get to that next level and take some of our leadership skills and impart that in the in the boys as they grow up. Last weekend we had great weather, and there were scouts at Camp Squano learning about what it takes to prepare food while camping and to earn their cooking merit badges. I spoke to three of the Troop 105's first class scouts and heard about all the culinary work they've been doing. This weekend, we're doing the cooking merit badge and uh, just pretty much every, the whole group's working towards to get it, the eager required, and uh, yeah. Okay, what, what kind of stuff are you cooking? So, pretty much like, I don't know, last <laughs> night, <laughs> last night uh, we made uh, french fries and grilled cheese, grilled cheese. Oh, yeah. and banana boats. Are they pretty and, good? Yeah, they're pretty good. Yeah. How about um, today? How'd you guys handle breakfast? Um, good. Yeah, it was fun. Went on a hike for we breakfast. Cooked breakfast on a trail, and it was oatmeal. Yeah. Cooked it on the trail, huh? Yeah. 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 It's a lot of water. It's a lot of fire. Yeah. Mm. Well, we well, had like yeah, yeah. Jet, bring your own like, like, campfire, and then. Cook the boil the water that you brought, and then cook the food that you made, like prepared before we left for the hike. Which was oatmeal. Yeah. yeah. With like raisins and whatever you wanted. Also. Cool. The Pembroke Board of Selectmen held a special Wednesday night meeting to hear about the three candidates that the town manager search committee has determined to be the best for the job. At an upcoming public meeting, selectmen will interview each candidate. The board will then pick one of them or ask the search committee to produce more candidates. Early voting has begun at Pembroke Town Hall.
for the March 3rd election. For more information, see the town clerk section of the Pembroke official webpage. The Hanover Mall is about to become a metropolis of sorts. Gone will be the buildings that housed Woolworth, Zayers, Child World, when it was all brand new back in the early 1970s. Over the next two years, workers will be building skyscraper apartment buildings, modern shopping, venues, restaurants, amusements, and much more. I recently spoke with Hanover Town Manager Joseph Colangelo about the long process of getting the project approved by the town government and about the benefits coming to the town of Hanover and its surrounding area. In uh, town meeting 2017, the town voters approved uh, tax incremental financing for the project, uh, which will result in you know, about $10, $11 million worth of property tax savings to the developer, which helps incentivize um, larger scale projects like this. At the last town meeting, approved 13 new liquor licenses um, because uh, you know, the part of the development will be about 300 units of uh, apartments. And then the mall itself is going to be more than just, um, you know, shops. It's going to be uh, restaurants and, uh, you know, some other activities like that. So uh, there was a number um, of, of votes that required town meeting approval, uh, required different boards to approve. And um now that there wasn't some controversy along the way, but I think that um, a lot of the concerns were ironed out um, during the process. This is uh, a project at a scale that's um, kind of beyond what a town like Hanover would see. Uh, and so, you know, that's understandable that it's, um, it's just something different, something you might see at a little bit more of an urban area, especially with uh, the 300 uh, apartment units, but um, you know, I think that by the end of the process, people came all around to feeling like the developers are going to do a good job, and that the town is going to get a good project at the end of the day. Yeah, you know, that was some of the concerns about you know what it, will the impacts be to the schools and things like that with the uh, apartments, but um, you know, we we did show for this project that with existing town resources, including fire, police, um, uh, you know, ambulance response or water, schools, that the town was going to be able to handle all of the growth without um, overly burdening existing services. Um, so, you know, that also helped people feel a little more, a little better about the project, that um, it was something that we're probably going to be able to, to manage. Well, my understanding is they're going to start um, uh, demolition in the next month or so, uh, and then the project should take about two years uh, to be completely um, done. Um, and so, you know, we'll see. Major concerns from residents were um, having to do with what was the impact going to be on water quality and quantity, um, and also traffic patterns, especially within some of the surrounding neighborhoods there. Um, and so, you know, I think that, um, I think at the end of the day that we were able to address um, most of those concerns and, you know, we're working on, on finding solutions to, to, to some of the things. The conditions that were applied to this project by the planning board, um, I think will actually make the town-wide water system better. If that's uh, kind of, you know, maybe that doesn't make sense that a, a large project like this that is going to be using water could actually make that situation better. But in fact, um, it should because of more advanced leak detection uh, programs that will be implemented, better metering town-wide that they're going to help uh, pay for. Um, and they're also going to be installing some new water lines within uh, the project. So I think uh, actually this project will help our water system uh, more so than hurt it. I mean, there's going to be financial benefits, um, you know, with, with more people living in town, that's more, that's a more excise tax. With more restaurants that will come in, that's more uh, meals and rooms tax. Um, certainly uh, we will receive more property tax uh, revenue from that project. Um, so there's 
those types of benefits. And then, you know, I think that um, just having a vibrant mall, which is really the, the number one economic engine of the town, um, you know, will be beneficial. And, it, and it's a regional center. It's right off the uh, Route 3 uh, off ramp. So you get people from Boston and Plymouth and everyone else uh, coming. So I think it's going to be, you know, really positive once it's done. Please join us again next week for PTN This Week. I'm your host, Art Edgerton. Thank you to our sponsor, Becky Coletta for Senate.